coming up on today's Wild West. All aboard for a trip back in time, aboard Colorado's Cumbres and Toltec Railroad. It's the same historic railroad that's been rolling down these tracks since the 1880s. Hey, 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 hey. Then we'll saddle up at Rainbow Trout Ranch, a Rocky Mountain Dude Ranch, fishing retreat, and much more. Today's Wild West, up next. The Wild West. It's still out there. And we'll show you how to find it. This is today's Wild West. gone, it's all the past. A coal-fired steam train rumbles through the wide open prairie of the American West. Heading up into the mountains with the narrow gauge railroad tracks will climb to over 10,000 feet as they cut through Coombers Pass, the highest steam powered railroad in North America. It may not be 1880, but it sure does look like it when you climb on board the Coombers and Toltec Scenic Railroad. It is a glimpse of the authentic West. We aren't reenacting the past. It just is the past. This National Historic Landmark runs 64 winding miles between Chama, New Mexico and Antonito, Colorado. Crisscrossing the state line 11 times along the way. And then we'll go back into New Mexico and then back into Colorado. Boom, boom. As the train chugs through remote, beautiful and unspoiled country that looks much like it did when these tracks were first laid back in 1880. The views are just gorgeous and we just love like the charm of the old train, the tunnels, the yeah. ghost towns you go by, it's gorgeous. Right. Yeah. Just, you just seen how like life would be like in yesteryear, right? Yeah. So. While it feels faster, the train rolls along at just 12 miles an hour. So it gives you an opportunity to see the America that the American dream was based on. The slower pace also comes with no internet or cell phone service. And at 12 miles an hour, the whole world gets huge. People slow down, they start to reconnect. We see it time after time. Husbands reconnecting with wives, parents with children, neighbors with neighbors, and redeveloping that sense of community. It's just a good, a good day trip for everyone to do. It's, yeah. a, it's worth the money and Get money. getting away yeah. from everything and just enjoying the beauty. The views are beautiful and the history is fascinating, which Dosen Bonsol Johnson is happy to share. I enjoy the people we meet and sharing something I'm really enthusiastic about. On this rolling piece of living history, time has stood still in the cab of engine 487. Uh, I just love it. I, I love steam trains. Where fireman engineer Jake V. Hill feeds the coal fire that powers the steam engine driven today by engineer Jeff Stebbins. And this is nothing but a great big rubber band. Stebbins has been a steam train engineer for more than 20 years. The biggest part of it is, is knowing the track. Uh, you know where, where you need to make brake applications and keeping the train stretched. Uh, and uh, all these engines operate differently. Uh, they may look the same, but they all got their own personalities. Jeff also flies airplanes, but he says piloting steam engines is much more challenging. Uh, there's far more anticipation than an airplane. You not only have to watch what, what's in front of you, you got as much behind you to watch. You have to watch this whole train. No complications today. Just a smooth ride with an ever-changing view out the window of an office where everyone is happy to come to work. Well, there's a lot to like about it. It's interesting all the time. I just love them. It's in my blood. Stebbins has been fascinated with steam trains forever. That's typical of a lot. I think a lot of railroaders and traveled all over South America just to ride their old trains, 15,000 feet in the Andes or along the Amazon. But he believes the train he runs today is the best. Uh, probably for preservation, uh, this is um, 
the best, the best there is in the world. By the way, if you've ever dreamed of being the engineer of an old-time steam train, the Coombers Toltec can make it happen through their four-day engineering school. Where people pay roughly 2,500 bucks, and they come out and get to spend several days on a locomotive, learning how to fire it and run it, uh, and you know, learning how to be a fireman, learning how to be an engineer. The train rolls into a long tunnel carved out of a mountain, and as daylight reappears, we get a look at Toltec Gorge, an impressive sight. Then another you'd never expect, trackside monument to President James Garfield, assassinated in 1881 as the railroad was being built. We pass that landmark just before the train rolls into Osher Station. Elevation 10,000 feet. It's a two quilt night every night. That's right, and I've yet, I've yet to swat a mosquito. <laughs> where we'll stop for a very tasty lunch prepared by a very cheerful chef. It's a great place to be. Very lucky, very, very lucky to be here. Business was a bit slower during the summer of the pandemic. Normally this place and the train are both packed. While passengers dined on lunch. How many gallons of water do you take on? Crew was gassing up the train with water. You gotta have sufficient water in the boiler is the most important thing. And after that break. Then it's back on the road again. To enjoy the rhythm of the rails. Spectacular country, huh? Yeah, it is. And soak in the scenery. It's all thanks to the people who saved this former stretch of the Denver Rio Grande. Built during the Colorado silver boom in the 1880s, the boom went bust by 1893. But the narrow gauge track that ran through this remote country had become too important to abandon. It didn't make enough money for them to upgrade it, but it was too important to just scrap it. And so it just sort of held on. And that's why it managed to reach 1970 as this time capsule. When the Denver Rio Grande finally did decide to pull the plug for good, preservationists rode to the rescue. Passengers are glad they did. We don't have anything like this back in Tennessee, and y'all ought to be really proud of this. Everybody ought to come out here and do this. Yeah, this train is nice. Probably the nicest one we've been on. Yeah. Today, the Coombers Toltec is jointly owned and operated by the states of New Mexico and Colorado. So basically, both states equally own all of this and so it's owned by the people our mission is very special therefore because what we are doing here is preserving this history this historic railroad goes to great lengths to provide a truly authentic experience this locomotive uh, she ran for the first time since 1935 last september when we visited their craftsmen had completed restoration of engine 168 built in 1883 and were on the home stretch of restoring several 19th century passenger cars cars that once looked like this one. This car was built for service on this railroad to go behind that locomotive and they will be running over the highest operating mountain pass in this hemisphere of the world behind the equipment that it was supposed to as if it was the 1880s all over again. Restoring these old train cars is like an archaeological dig that uncovers the ups and downs of running what was often a troubled railroad. And what's interesting, these artifacts then tell a story as you're getting into them. It's not just the story of the halcyon days of yore, it's the story of, of feast and famine and, and hardship and, and good times, and, and you can read it in the artifact itself. It tells a story of this railroad and the people that worked for it and the communities that it served. But they need your support to keep it all going. These things survive because people come and ride. So while the Coombers Toltec is a spectacular scenic railroad, it's also much more than that. The Coombers Toltec Railroad is not a reenactment or a recreation. It's the same historic railroad that's been rolling down these tracks since the 1880s.
even though we are an operating railroad, we are really a museum on wheels, a living history institution. It's still 64 miles of 1880. It is the past as far as the eye can see in any direction. Step back in time, anyone willing to step on board.